It's about hearing, well, it doesn't exist, but I know it exists to make you feel small. It's about keeping that idea small. So whether it's demons, whatever it is, I, I can't prove any of that. I know that you don't get into these upper echelons of the elite unless you are into devil worship, hurting children. And I know every culture ends up being run by an elite that does that yep. when no one I know acts like that or believes like that. So regardless of what runs it, regardless, it's going on. And, and, and David, I, how did you discover you know, all of this? Because you said you went to, I think it was Peru by some standing stones and had a vision. And you know, I don't get into new age type stuff. I don't even believe in all that. I went to Stonehenge and walked across a line thinking, oh, this is boring and instantly felt energized. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, I mean, I've talked to you on the show before about uh, the fact that, you know, this reality is a projection from an energetic uh, uh, information blueprint, a bit like wireless internet. Um, and you believe that scientists have found now that it's a computer program, that yeah. that's the hack. Yeah, that's the hack. But the thing is that the, the, the energy that you felt, and, and see, the Earth has an energy field. We all know that. Everyone accepts that. But the, it is interpenetrated with uh, a network of lines. They're known in, in, in Britain as, as ley lines or meridian lines. These are lines of force. Now, where um, many of these lines cross, think of it as a web. It literally is a web of energy, electromagnetic energy. So where lots of them cross... That's how birds navigate. Yeah, well, yes, this, 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 these uh, are the, uh, the electromagnetic fields. By the way, it's now been proven that, that, that we all have these cells in our brain. Yeah, these, these are the electromagnetic fields that, that they, they use to navigate. And, and so many other things happen that are called paranormal. The scientists, you know, like, you know, Stonehenge is a good one. Stonehenge is where the bloody scientists ought to be. That's where their minds are in terms of, you know, understanding reality as it really is. If I am given information from beings who have proved to be perfectly accurate day after day after day and things they've told me. Well, there is an energy um, that uh, comes from a being called the Godhead, which is, I mean, we, we talk about God. The, the Godhead is not um, a guy with a beard sitting on a cloud. It is a massive spirit, the basis of all creation. And coming out from this Godhead, round all creation, through all the stars, through all the planets and uh, everything else is the life force known as the light and the Bible refers to the light and uh, Within this light are various other energies which have certain gifts when we think It is not a vacuum We when we think we create an energy field This is how telepathy works an energy field leaves one being and other beings can tune into it and read that thought when you think thoughts of love and wisdom and of tolerance and all the things we wish to bring to the earth, you create a certain kind of thought energy, the very same energy that the Godhead sends around creation. If anyone believes, after 12,000 years of this truth being lost uh, and forgotten, that coming out with it initially is going to get any kind of reaction other than that one or condemnation, then I would be a crackpot. But the scientists kind of dismiss that. So they're going, this is a mystery. But when you understand you've got this unifying field which unifies everything, suddenly the, the, the paranormal becomes perfectly body logical. But where are lots of these lines cross, a, a massive vortex of energy is created. And if you do things in that vortex, you affect the Earth's energy field in a much more powerful way. By the way, way, I thought it was a joke, had forgotten it was on the phone and walked across a line, and they kept going back, and my whole crew felt it. Yeah, I mean, I was doing this. Have you been there? I've been oh, loads of times. I've been doing, uh, you know, this is something I, I researched at great length uh, years ago, and it's not New Age. Some people who do it, are, uh, you call themselves New Age. <coughs> what it is, is simply understanding reality on a level that mainstream science does not understand and does not want to understand. Why why? Because it's controlled by the same network, and the last thing that network wants the target population to do is understand the nature of the reality it's experienced. That's right. Going to break back in 60 seconds. And by the way, I did look it up. Guess what the Grove's on? The very same ley line.
It's about hearing, well, it doesn't exist, but I know it exists to make you feel small. It's about keeping that idea small. So whether it's demons, whatever it is, I, I can't prove any of that. I know that you don't get into these upper echelons of the elite unless you are into devil worship, hurting children. And I know every culture ends up being run by an elite that does that yep. when no one I know acts like that or believes like that. So regardless of what runs, regardless, it's going on. And, and, and David, I, how did you discover you know, all of this? Because you said you went to, I think it was Peru by some standing stones and had a vision. And you know, I don't get into new age type stuff. I don't even believe in all that. I went to Stonehenge and walked across a line thinking, oh, this is boring and instantly felt energized. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, I mean, I've talked to you on the show before about uh, the fact that, you know, this reality is a projection from an energetic uh, uh, information blueprint, a bit like wireless internet. Um, and you believe that scientists have found now that it's a computer program, yeah. that that's the hack. Yeah, that's the hack. But the thing is that the, the, the energy that you felt, and, and see, the Earth has an energy field. We all know that. Everyone accepts that. But it is interpenetrated with uh, a network of lines. They're known in, in, in Britain as, as ley lines or meridian lines. These are lines of force. Now, where um, many of these lines cross, think of it as a web. It literally is a web of energy, electromagnetic energy. So where lots of them cross... That's how birds navigate. Yeah, well, yes. This, 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 these uh, are the, uh, the electromagnetic fields. By the fields. way, it's now been proven that, that, that we all have these cells in our brain. Yeah, these, these are the electromagnetic fields that, that they, they use to navigate. And, and so many other things happen that are called paranormal. The scientists, you know, like, you know, Stonehenge is a good one. Stonehenge is where the bloody scientists ought to be. That's where their minds are in terms of, you know, understanding reality as it really is. But the scientists kind of dismiss that so they're going this is a mystery but when you understand you've got this unifying field which unifies everything suddenly the, the, the paranormal becomes perfectly bloody logical but where are lots of these lines cross a, a massive vortex of energy is created and if you do things in that vortex, you affect the Earth's energy field in a much more powerful well, by the way, way. I thought it was a joke, had forgotten it was on the phone and walked across a line, and they kept going back, and my whole crew felt it. Yeah, I mean, I was doing this. Have you been there? I've been, oh, loads of times. I've been doing, you know, this is something I, I researched at great length uh, years ago, and it's not New Age. Some people who do it are, you call themselves New Age. <coughs> what it is, is simply understanding reality on a level that mainstream science does not understand. And does does not want to understand why because it's controlled by the same network and the last thing that network wants the target population to do is understand the nature of the reality it's experienced that's right going to break back in 60 seconds and by the way i did look it up guess what the grove's on the very same ley line If I am given information from beings who have proved to be perfectly accurate day after day after day and things they've told, told me. If I am given information from beings who have proved to be perfectly accurate day after day after day and things they've told, told, told us are going to happen and they happen. Information from beings who have proved to be perfectly accurate day after day after day and things they've told, told, told us are going to happen and they happen. Information from beings who have proved to be perfectly accurate day after day after day and things they've told, told, told us are going to happen and they happen.
I want you to hear about this. We'll be right back. We now return to It's Supernatural. Amazing. Between three and 10,000 years ago, our civilization had electricity? How, L.A., is this possible? These stones in my tar that we just talked about, the stones at the base of a Catholic church, have piezoelectric properties. They're highly polished surfaces. They were, they were carved from a quarry, um, in some cases granite, in other cases andrasite. These are just stones. And they're able to, sort of like crystal radios in the, in the 20s mm -hmm. and the 30s, that's similar what, what they can, they can conduct electric, electricity. What we, what we believe is that there was an ancient grid system over this planet at one point uh, with points of connectivity. This grid system may have been used not only as a communication, but perhaps to control the weather, to bring rain in, um, all how sorts they, of things. How could they have all this sophistication? I mean, just sophistication without a wheel move, moving, moving the these, blocks. these blocks. How, how, what explanation do you have? Well, you have two. You have one, which is the extraterrestrial, that they came from Zeta Reticuli, which, of course, I don't believe in. The one I hold to, and hold to very, very fast and diligently, is we are looking at fallen angel technology. And we get some of this in the Book of Enoch, which tells us that they came and showed the secrets of heaven to the men and women of Earth. All right, tell me about, in the United States, in Ohio, the Great Circle Mound. First, explain what it is. The Circle Mound is a hinge. It's a very large circle, over 1,250 feet in diameter. The, the word hinge means? Hinge means this. It, it's circle. a circle, but it also has a... Okay, tell me about uh, the... American Stonehenge connection with the, uh, we hear about the Stonehenge in England, uh, and then a third place. Explain. Sure. The American Stonehenge is in New Hampshire. Well, how come we haven't seen this? How come we haven't been told about this, this Stonehenge? Well, it, it's, things are coming to light. I believe because we're in the last days that all this stuff which has been hidden. The Earth has an energy field. We all know that. Everyone accepts that. But the, it is interpenetrated with uh, a network of lines. They're known in, in, in Britain as, as ley lines or meridian lines. These are lines of force. Now, where um, many of these lines cross, think of it as a web. It literally is a web of energy, electromagnetic energy. So where lots of them cross... That's how birds navigate. Yeah, well, yes, this, 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 these uh, are the, uh, the electromagnetic fields. By the way, it's now been proven that, that, that we all have these cells in our brain. Yeah, these, these are the electromagnetic fields that, that they, they use to navigate. And, and so many other things happen that are called paranormal. The scientists, you know, like, you know, Stonehenge is a good one. Stonehenge is where the bloody scientists ought to be. That's where their minds are in terms of, you know, understanding reality as it really is. The former television sports presenter has been studying circles in Wiltshire and near his home on the Isle of Wight. So Mary Green has been to see him. Crop circles obey scientists and sightseers alike. Swirling air currents, magnetic forces, even mischievous con men have all been blamed in the past and millions of pounds have been spent in efforts to find their cause. Now David Icke has joined the annual controversy. After visiting circles in Wiltshire and the Isle of Wight, he claims their messages from the spirit of the earth, asking creation for help before it's too late. It's not just one set of symbols in one field that is the message. It's all of them together. It's like a tapestry, a canvas. If you put a piece of paper very close to your face, you might see one word. If you pull it back, you see the whole page, the whole communication. And from a great height, when creation looks down upon the earth and these crop symbols, they don't just see one field, they see all of them together. And they all make one message. And the message last year was, I need an influx of positive energy, created by love, basically. Um, otherwise, there is no planet. David Icke himself mystified the public earlier this year when amongst widespread cynicism he proclaimed himself the spirit of the Son of God and published a book containing his beliefs and predictions of future world disasters. Now back in the Isle of Wight, after travelling worldwide, he's inviting us to take to the fields and send our own messages. Very important to walk in, in, that, in the direction the corn has fallen and to send thoughts of love to the earth because every time you do that the energy that she needs to survive will be produced and absorbed by her. 
He may know what they are, but David Icke still offers no explanation of exactly how the crop patterns are created. So, as the scientists are unlikely to accept the theory of Mother Earth, the mystery looks set to remain, and the cynics will be having a field day. Mary Green, Coast to Coast. Alice Jones here at Stonehenge, just Earth, southwest here, of three London. Times now. It's called and it's uh, all I heard it means. Apparently, old we're here, of course, covering Bilderberg. 8,013 and fallwars.com. Above sea level, up in the Andes. The ancient stones, the perfect backdrop to this all night summer solstice gathering. Everyone hoping sunrise on the longest day would be as good as this the sunset which greeted people as they arrived. Last year it was too misty, the year before we had horizontal rain. Hopefully this year we'll get a clear one. So why bother making the journey to this far-flung corner of Wiltshire, then have to walk nearly a mile from your car to the stones and stay up till at least 4.53 a.m. I'm coming to be re reborn, magically, spiritually, Reborn, transitioning through the universe into something new. I think it's fantastic. Just it's a nice atmosphere. And it's actually a nicer atmosphere than a lot of festivals because everyone seems to be a lot more laid back. And have you been there? Oh, I've been oh, loads of times. I've been doing. You know, this is something I, I researched at great length uh, years ago, and it's not new age. Some people who do it. When I saw the coherence between the crop circles and the ancient encodings, I thought regardless of whoever created them and wherever they're from, there must be an important purpose to these designs. They're so coherent. I've come to believe that the pattern of the torus and the vector equilibrium, especially in the form of the 64 tetrahedron crystal, is showing us how energy works in the universe so that we can learn to align with it. I believe that they're giving us a model for accessing energy in a clean, safe, and limitless way, and a new means of propulsion. What more important message could there be to get to us, and especially now, from their perspective, as we're beginning to extend our careless reach beyond our planet? Have you been there? Oh, I've been oh, loads of times. I've been doing, uh, you know, this is something I, I researched at great length. Uh, and they'll let you touch it. You've got to like sign up a month ahead, like, 30 people in the morning and at night can go right when it opens and closes to see it. McAdoo, uh, I, I, at first I was calling, I said, do you guys feel something? And you were all the same. Tell people briefly your take on this. Um, absolutely. I agree with you. It was magnetic. It, uh, when I first, when we were pulling up, I was like, oh gosh, it's going to be super touristy. And it was really awkward looking because there's these ancient stones on a perfectly manicured lawn like right next to the highway so it was just sort of like this cheesy sort of setup yeah we were like oh this is 
Yeah. And walking up on, I was like hit by a thunderbolt. Right. And then you just walk up and it literally, you walk across this line and it's, for me, it felt like my stomach just sort of dipped like a roller coaster. It was like, Phew. and then once you kind of cross that threshold, it was just this really strong force that just pulled, pulled you toward it. It was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah, no, no. Watson said, how do you feel? And I said, I feel pulled towards or against. And, and the tour guide, you know, he was like a professor that goes out there, volunteers once a week. That's who they have each day as a different professor. He's a, he was a professor of... Uh... Ancient sites do harness energy. We're going to see a variety of sites that do this. The first one we're going to talk about is menhirs or standing stones. Now, I want you to just primarily look at them. There's not a whole lot to say except how beautiful they are. Henges are the ones that everybody is so familiar with and we love so dearly because of Stonehenge, but that's not the only one. This is a part of Avebury here, which is another henge. The sheep really like the energy the stones give off. <laughs> Sometimes you get large stones that are just set up right but are not specifically tall and narrow like that. This is an example of a barrow and a henge. You have a henge in the front and this is a barrow in the back with an entrance up here. Another example of a hinge, another example. So you can see these don't just occur a couple times. They keep happening over and over again. And these are only the ones that are still standing. There's many others that have been buried. Now this is fascinating because this is the full outline of Avebury. Every single little dot in this entire serpent shape that you see here used to be a standing stone. And every single one of them still exists. They've dug them up from the ground. So this was an enormous serpent with a head and then the stomach that has eaten something. And this is Silbury Hill. So what you actually have here, if you notice the triangular relationship between these areas, is all these stones and the mound are all built to focus energy here and here primarily. It sends the energy into this area where a large gathering of people happen, and it acts as a consciousness enhancing technology, which we now have lost access to in the West. And this, of course, is Stonehenge, the most famous group of these standing stones of all. Quite beautiful, tongue and groove lintels that stand on top of the menhirs. Now the next question is, are these ancient structures connected? And the science that will help us to understand this is ley lines. Ley lines are one of the most enduring earth mysteries, a network of prehistoric pathways crisscrossing the country believed to have mystical significance. Their alignments and patterns of powerful earth energy said to connect various sacred sites including churches, temples, stone circles, megaliths, holy wells, burial sites, and other locations of spiritual or magical importance. Major prehistoric structures of higher importance can frequently be found to occupy locations where two or more lays intersect with each other. Allegedly, and I see it on the side of the highway. It kind of made it like modern, but the highway is like 50 yards away from it. I'm like, oh, that's nothing. And so we get out, we park. I'm not saying I can't wait to see this. We're talking about, yeah, let's work on that store. We got to meet with these sources tonight. Yeah. And we're walking up the path. Yeah, there's Stonehenge. And when I walk across this line, it's like, bzzz. I was like, whoa. I was like, do you guys feel that? So it's not like I was expecting something. And they're like, whoa, I feel it when they were describing it. And then we went back and came back across it again. And it's like, it's like a line. It's like, whoa, you go through it and it kind of feels like freaking you out like a roller coaster, like McAdoo said earlier. And then it's like drawing you into it. And the ancients thought enough of this site with all these hills around it, but it's up above them. It's very magic that they built this there and hauled hundreds of miles, giant stones to build this. And it shows how man, humankind was imagining something bigger, the human potential to build spacecraft and computers and helicopters and all of this would show the creativity of humans that they would pick up on this magnetic line and just with the energy of the earth that fish use to navigate and birds use to navigate and whales use this is a special place because there's hundreds of standing stones just in the uk alone ireland scotland england wales but they're all over the world and people talk about these. David Icke talks about being in Peru with some standing stones and, phew, and that he, all the stuff was like downloaded to him. He was like a major BBC presenter making a million pounds a year and he went off on this thing. The point is, is that this was mystical. There's no doubt. And I, I gotta tell you, I'm going back while I'm here. I mean, amazing. This uh, mountain range that basically goes right down the, the west coast of South America, way back 
I mean, the Inca um, apparently built this amazing uh, city in like the 15th, 16th century before the Spanish moved in. The most magnificent sites on planet Earth, in my view. I've been here three times now. It's called Machu Picchu, which means apparently Old Peak. We're 8,000 feet above sea level, up in the Andes, this uh, mountain range that basically goes right down the, the west coast of South America. And down there, 1,500 feet uh, below us is the Urumbamba River, which under its um, old name, its real name, Wikamayu, uh, is Inca for sacred river, holy river. It's funny, when I first came here in 1991 to Peru, and my life changed. I won't go into that now because I'm going to uh, go in a few days to the place where my life changed and I'll, I'll be producing a film next weekend um, uh, from there explaining all that. But basically amazing things started to happen for me in 1990 and uh, towards the end of 1990 I, I came across this psychic lady. She said, um, have you ever thought of going to Peru? And I thought, I haven't actually, no. But from that moment, it was um, Peru was coming into my into my uh, life everywhere. Seeing Peru, and eventually I, I went there. But one of the things she said to me, and I go back to the the car, and, and I'm, it was nice, but it didn't match the urge I had to go there. So I get in the, the van thing, and we start to drive away. And I'm looking out the window, daydreaming, and I look, at, I see this mound to my right, but it must be no more than three minutes down the road. And as I look at the mound, all I can hear in my head is, come to me, come to me, come to me, come to me, come to me. What? Because this is, I'm really new to this stuff. I mean, what's going on with my life? So I said to the guy, can you stop the van because uh, the bus thing, I'm, I'm going up the, the mound. Um, so I went up the mound. I couldn't see it from the road. But when I got to the top, there was a circle of standing stones about waist high. These stones were obviously been there a very, very long time. So I walk into the middle of this circle and I'm looking across to see Ustani and across to the distant mountains and it's a it's a piercing hot Peruvian day no clouds not a cloud in the sky very much like this one today um, and I walk to the center of this circle and suddenly my feet go again like they did in the new shop but only seriously more powerful this like, they're like magnets pulling my feet to the ground and I think, oh, crikey, I recognize that. Here we go. And then I felt like a drill going in the top of my head and through my body, through my feet, into the ground, and then another one coming the other way. And then my arms go out at 45 degrees like that. I never made any decision to do it. And I walked to the center of the circle and suddenly my feet go again, like they did in the new shop, but only seriously more powerful. This, like, they're like magnets pulling my feet to the ground. And I think, oh crikey, I recognize that, here we go. And then I felt like a drill going in the top of my head and through my body, through my feet into the ground and then another one coming the other way. And then my arms go out at 45 degrees like that. I never made any decision to do it. <laughs> And of course, you, 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 you hold your arms out there for, you know, a minute. It starts to eight, or my shoulders do anyway. I, I, it was the best part of an hour. It must be 45 minutes to an hour, my arms were like that. And when it was over, my shoulders were agony, but when it was going on, nothing. And what then started to happen is this energy coming through me, this is um, February 1991, um, got more and more powerful. My body started to shake.
And what then started to happen is this energy coming through me, this is um, February 1991, um, got more and more powerful. My body started to shake with it. And the, uh, I had um, two um, very powerful thought forms just passed through my head, just like in the news shop. The first one said, they'll be talking about this 100 years from now. And I'm thinking, talking about what? And the other one was, it will be over when you feel the rain. I've just described what the weather was like. It will be over when you feel the rain. I mean, you're having a laugh, mate. Um, so what happened there for the next 45 minutes, because time disappeared, there was no time, I worked it out later, um, was that this energy just kept coming through me. And I kept going in and out of, if you like, awareness, consciousness, like driving a car. interact with these massive vortex uh, points where all these um, lines cross and whip up this massive vortex then uh, you can you can access and tap into that power and so they used to build their cities because they're, they're you not know, saying every every Inca knew all this no but the initiates did uh, and so they located places on the basis of this this energy grid and therefore the, 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 the vortex points which, which has this power which they can tap into if you know what you're doing. Because, you know, on, 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 on one level, you know, uh, the, the body, the auric field, whatever you want to call it, is, is an electromagnetic field. And these vortex points and these energy lines are electromagnetic energy and at that level you can interact with them and you can absorb their power, absorb their knowledge, absorb their information. And uh, it's, uh, it's just an amazing place. And when you go around it and have it uh, explained by uh, a guide that's going around with this Peruvian guide called Malku, um, it's, it's fascinating to, to, to see that these so-called primitive people, at least at the level of the initiates, were not bloody primitive at all. In fact, they were aware of a level of physics relating to what we call them, and it called it something different, or whatever, a spirit, or whatever, but uh, on the basis of this electromagnetic interaction that is possible between apparently inanimate objects and uh, um, energy lines and vortex points in the human, human energy field, um, it's fascinating to, to see that they understood all that, and they understood it then more than mainstream science does now, which thinks, oh, it's old mumbo jumbo, well, it's not, it's high physics. come up to me today and said the same thing when you hit this point you get affected by this energy and he was a science guy he was saying i'm a physics phd yeah, i don't believe in religious yeah, i don't believe in any of this stuff but you, you know you're the third person today to say exactly the same thing when you hit this point boom the energy hits you and i expected it to be a somber and oppressive kind of environment because of the druidic nature of it but it was quite energetic and uplifting, actually, I found it. And I felt, I felt crazy. Yeah, I felt the same, I felt the power the same way you did. So I enjoyed, I didn't expect to think much of it, but Were I enjoyed it. Were you seething with power? Literally, it's running through my veins right now. Yeah, I, I gotta be honest, I'm pretty crazy, right? I'm already crazy, folks, let me tell you. I like Stonehenge a lot. I'm gonna, <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Maga, do any other points? You were like, they must let me touch it. I need the power. <laughs> Don't tell them all the secrets. Now, now we get it. Anyways, but your wife didn't like it because she felt like she was being watched, right, David Knight? I think she was just kind of, I think she felt something different, you know. It was no, it's a, different. I've never yeah. felt anything like this. Mm -hmm. She didn't say that she got any kind of a good feeling out of it. She didn't describe anything like you're talking about. She was just kind of freaked out about it. I think just kind of feeling the the ancient druid sacrifice aspect of it, I think that's kind of what freaked her out. Well, that's what they did, though. That was their their mm -hmm. answer to it. Right. I, I just got, like, electrified by it. I, I... Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day.
to my daily radio broadcast. These are lines of force. Now, where um, many of these lines cross, think of it as a web. It literally is a web of energy, electromagnetic energy. So where lots of them cross... That's how birds navigate. Yeah, well, yes, this, 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 these uh, are the uh, the electromagnetic fields. By the way, it's now been proven that, that, that we all have these cells in our brain. Yeah, these, these are the electromagnetic fields that, that they, they use to navigate. And, and so many other things happen that are called paranormal. The scientists, you know, like, you know, Stonehenge is a good one. Stonehenge is where the bloody scientists ought to be. That's where their minds are in terms of, you know, understanding reality as it really is. But the scientists kind of dismiss that so they're going this is a mystery but when you understand you've got this unifying field which unifies everything suddenly the, the, the paranormal becomes perfectly bloody logical but where are lots of these lines cross a, a massive vortex of energy is created and if you do things in that vortex you affect the earth's energy field in a much more powerful well, by the way, way i thought it was a joke had forgotten it was on the phone and walked across a line and they kept going back and my whole crew felt it yeah i mean i was doing this have you been there i've been oh, loads of times i've do, been doing you know this is something I, I researched at great length uh years ago and it's not new age some people who do it are you call themselves new age What it is, is simply understanding reality on a level that mainstream science does not understand and does not want to understand. Why? I've come to believe that the pattern of the torus and the vector equilibrium, especially in the form of the 64 tetrahedron crystal, is showing us how energy works in the universe so that we can learn to align with it. I believe that they're giving us a model for accessing energy in a clean, safe, and limitless way and a new means of propulsion what more important message could there be to get to us and especially now from their perspective as we're beginning to extend our careless reach beyond our planet the work was and their work is the development of a new technology of light planet Earth, which of course they have centuries in their own planet. From a mixture of our um, Earth field, our, our magnetic field and the energy from the sun. These, these crop circles are points of the earth surface, which of course are not only in Wiltshire, but they're in the oceans and up mountain sides, in the jungle of the north and everywhere else, in the deserts of the, of the south. And at these, they are making a replica of the magnetic field of our earth, going round the south, is a magnetic field. It's made up of streams of energy which crisscross and crisscross and crisscross. And where they crisscross a number of times, they form a vortex. And these vortices are the chakras. The vortices in the, in the magnetic field. This has been replicated in the physical field. And with the energy away from the sun, they give us total well, now, let me get this story right. The press claim that you claim to be the son of God. Mm -hmm. Is that true? 
Yes, you see, the thing is that uh, you see, it's, quite, it's quite funny, really. You know, 2,000 years ago, had a guy called Jesus sat here and said these same things, you would still be laughing. It's really, really funny that we've not really moved on that much. When we think, it is not a vacuum. We, when we think, we create an energy field. This is how telepathy works. An energy field leaves one being, and other beings can tune into it and read that thought. The absolute stillness, the zero point, that lies at the center of each toroidal system. I believe that you and I, as well as every other being, are Taurus energy fields, centered by stillness, and each connected to one another and to the boundless consciousness of a living universe. As much as I benefit from the experience the other thing is, there is this great illusion, you know, that Jesus was born and stood up and said, I know who I am. It was revealed to him in stages. He was very, very close to beginning the mission which is described in the Bible, but not described brilliantly accurately, um, before he knew who he was. And when he came out, Terry, and said, I am the Son of God, I am an aspect of the soul of the Godhead incarnate because of things that need to be done on this planet urgently, um, people laughed, people ridiculed. And in the end, you know, they crucified him. There are a couple of questions. First of all, why you? And secondly... And one great example of the way this works I came across, which the, the, the beings, which we, we call the guys, uh, told us about... You call them the guys? The, gu the guys, yeah. It's, mm. it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's not... Um, it's not well, well, the beings like... Uh, uh, Ataro, Rakowski, and yeah, yeah, that's right. right. What about these three spirit guides that you constantly have? Do we all have spirit guides? Yeah. Well, the three guides I, I, I mentioned in the they book... They all come from Uranus, Yeah, right? well, well, the three guides I mentioned in the book were at that stage of my development, there, there, there are now others. Uh, it, it depends on what you're doing, depending who your guide is. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but you bring up a very important point. We all have guides right. on the other dimensions who we know and work with and agree before we incarnate into a physical body what we wish to do in that lifetime. My guest uh, on this planet just now, it's uh, <laughs> David Icke. Now, David, um, what else have you found out uh, after actually writing the book and publishing the book about the Jesus story, you, you alluded to that a few minutes ago. Well, there's there's a, a, a great deal um, uh, that we've been told about the Jesus story, uh, and it's a great deal that we are... By the spirit guides. Yeah, who are going to be told. Uh, we're going to be told, and this will appear in the, in the second book, which is called Love Changes Everything, which is just about the most, um, well, it is popular the, song that I've ever ever written. Well, it's the message, really. Love Changes Everything. Um, but the other thing, of course, we, we've learned since um, the book very recently, are the, not, not only that changes are going to happen, we've, that they're in the book, but there's some specific ones. And it, it's so important, Nicky, to get over that these great changes, these geological changes, are not punishment. You well, let me put it in the, sort of yeah. layman's terms how I interpreted it from the book. Okay. Um, we've been messing about with these energy lines, yeah. these ley lines. Yeah. This is like my reading of it. Yeah. Uh, so much so that the, the natural energy flow of the earth... The life force. The life force of the yeah. earth has been interrupted. Yeah. And in a way, these energy changes are me mechanisms whereby the earth is letting off steam and Correct. readjusting. It's cleansing. Mm. Correct. What happens, you see, Nicky, is that the Godhead sends out um, an energy uh, right around creation called, called the light. Imagine it in simple terms as the blood supply... Is that what Jesus was? I am the way, the truth, and the light? Correct. Mm. Um, Imagine it as uh, blood within the the the. the, the